Well, let's talk about the moving parts now around this developing situation towards a potential ceasefire with Nuro Day, who's a political analyst and columnist. She joins us from Ramallah in the occupied West Bank. Uh, so, Nuro, as we see, US aid drops underway from the air into Gaza City, unlikely to ease the situation much for most Palestinians and a sign, presumably, that the Biden administration has been unable, with all of its supposed leverage, to per convince the Israelis to let aid in on the ground. The deal is in place, we understand, for six-week pause in the fighting. The pressure appears to be on Hamas to accede to that deal. Do you think they will? I think they will find it very difficult not to. Uh, ultimately, uh, Egypt and Qatar, who have been uh, working um, around the clock for the past months to get to a ceasefire, to get to an agreement that would end the war and that would necessarily require some sort of political framework. They need Hamas's cooperation for this deal, and they have been making the point that without it, it will be very difficult to find a, a pathway towards the end of the war. Hamas, of course, is also under a lot of pressure domestically. They need to be able to say that this six-week ceasefire will make a difference, that there would be enough aid flowing in, that people would be able to uh, return to the north and not starve to death because humanitarian aid is not allowed, um, and that there would be no restrictions, like uh, some of the things that we heard, that only women and children and the elderly would be allowed, while men up to age 45 would still be uh, you know, uh, uh, kept in the South. Um, many of those details, I think, is where the sticking points are. We're going to hear a lot of um, rhetoric in, in the hours and days before an announcement. Mm. And we're going to see an escalation on the ground. That's how these things have played out, uh, unfortunately, in the past. But I think ultimately it will be very difficult for Hamas to say no to Qatar and Egypt at this point. Broadly speaking, what are the elements that need to come into play or fall into place in order to shift talks towards a, 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 a pause in the fighting on to talks towards an end game, an end, a permanent end to the fighting? Well, I think the really the missing part, the big gap, is uh, the American role. And as we've heard, um, uh, you know, throughout the coverage today, the Biden administration is, you know, resorting to extreme measures like dropping aid because it can't bring its ally and the country that depends on it uh, for this war to open more crossings, to allow food into the Strip to save lives of people that Israel is, has been starving for five months. And so the, the you know, the unwillingness of Biden to use that leverage has put the American administration in a very uh, um, uh, uncomfortable position, seeming Facebook. weak, uh, seeming unable to deliver, unable to, you know, uh, take on its role, uh, the role that it likes to take on as the leader of the world, as the most powerful country mm. in the world, unable to push its ally in the right direction. And that uh, means that talking end game, talking an end to the war and how Israel would withdraw is almost nearly impossible right now. That perhaps explains why the Americans are keen on receiving Benny Gantz and kind of pushing Netanyahu, showing him that there are other options in the Israeli political scene they can talk to, um, to make him understand that this um, impasse is untenable for them, especially as they approach uh, uh, you know, ever closer to election day in November. Meanwhile, of course, as we've been hearing from our correspondent Hani Mahmoud on the ground, Ramadan looms 10 days or so away. Uh, still the threat over the heads of those people in Gaza of a potentially catastrophic attack by the Israelis on Rafah, the aid situation we know all about it, people living in abject misery. And as Hani said, tired of false hope as they watch helpless as these negotiations unfold. Absolutely. They are tired of false hope, and they're not really looking forward to a one-off deal that would see a pause in the fighting and then a resumption of the killing after six weeks. They want to believe that those six weeks could bring 
uh, on a political process that ends the war. And that's what Hamas needs to uh, convince the public that it can do. Um, and it needs the Arab uh, countries for that. And it needs the Americans to take on a very different active role in that. All of those pieces of the puzzle still remain elusive. And that's why these, these discussions and these negotiations taking place in Cairo are so difficult, because nobody wants to, see, to be seen as the reason for uh, not having a ceasefire during Ramadan. But at the same time, nobody wants to be seen as having caved in because of pressure while not being able to deliver on, on the things that matter the most to their public. Comprehensive analysis there from Noor O'Day in Ramallah. Very many thanks for your time.